Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So if you're newer to the personal finance world, you might see a lot of terms and abbreviations and wonder what the heck do these mean? Now I've done some YouTube videos in the past explaining and going more in depth about some of these terms, but I really want to create a one-stop shop sort of resource for you doing a quick definition of many of the most popular terms and abbreviations. So this video is gonna be short and sweet, just sort of quick fire definitions of these terms. But if there's anything you'd like to see in more detail, just comment below and let me know. Now, I will say many of these terms don't have official definitions, so I'm gonna be giving you my best interpretation of the terms. But before I get into that, just a quick reminder to please comment, subscribe, like, share, all the fun things. It does help me out greatly. I greatly appreciate it. And you want to be sure you're seeing each of my new videos. All right, let's get right into it. So the first term I want to talk about is DFC, which stands for the Debt Free Community. And to my knowledge, the Debt Free Community was created on Instagram. Now, correct me down below if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's created on Instagram. That's actually how I found it. And basically, it's a group of individuals who were focused on getting out of debt, staying out of debt, or it can be used, especially now, in a much broader sense of just people focused on personal finances. So it could be people who are looking to achieve other financial goals, such as building an emergency fund, saving up for a house, learning how to travel hack or house hack, even people who are trying to reach FIRE. Which brings me to the next abbreviation, which is FIRE, F-I-R-E, which means Financial Independence Retire Early. And again, as the name suggests, it simply means someone who is trying to achieve financial independence, meaning they don't have to rely on some nine to five paycheck, that their life is fully funded by their own savings and investments, and many times with the end goal to retire early. Now, just because someone is trying to achieve FIRE, as we say in the community, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to just stop working at say age 40, but it does mean that they don't have to rely on working for someone else so they can get by or live a life that they desire. It might mean that they work on passive income or it might mean that they are still able to work for someone else, but just more on their terms. Really, the FIRE movement is all about freedom. Next up is HYSA, which stands for High Yield Savings Account. And this is simply an account that has a higher interest rate on all of your deposits and balances. So to give you an example, I have two different main accounts. One I use for my basic bill paying, and then the other I use for more long-term savings. So my larger emergency fund or long-term savings goal, like saving up for a house. Now, my basic checking account has an annual percentage yield of just 0.01%. I mean, that's really, that's nothing. It's nothing, let's be honest. But in my high yield savings account, I have an annual percentage yield of 1%. That makes a big difference over the course of year, and that's creating passive income for me. The next term is home economist. Now, I have referred to myself as a home economist for years, and I first heard this term through Dave Ramsey. And basically, the home economist tries to be the most efficient with your household's money. So this can mean different things to different people, and I know different home economists have different ways of doing things, but basically you want to save you and your household as much money as possible and really just make sure you get the most bang for every single buck. So for me, that might mean something like meal prepping or meal planning. It could mean couponing, maybe shopping around for different insurance rates, shopping around for anything we might need in our household, trying to find things used, trying to repair or repurpose something in our house so we don't have to buy things new. Really just any way I can save my husband and I money so we can take that saved money and put it towards other financial goals. 
Next up is the zero base budget. And this might be one of my favorite terms on the list, probably because budget's in the name, but also because this is what I use myself. And a zero base budget simply means you are assigning every single dollar a name and that once you account for every single dollar having a purpose in your budget, you have zero dollars left over. So in other words, when you have your monthly income that you bring every single month, every single dollar that comes in is assigned to a corresponding expense which could be savings or something like that until every single dollar is accounted for. Next up, IRA, which simply means an individual retirement account. So the next two terms I wanna talk about are the most popular ways I hear that people get out of debt. So the first one is the debt avalanche. And with a debt avalanche, it simply means that you're paying off your debts greatest interest to lowest interest. So regardless of how much the debt actually is, you wanna focus on debts with the highest interest rate, paying the, those off first, and then making your way down to the debts with the lowest interest rates and paying those off last. Now, the other way that people pay off their debts is with the debt snowball. And I have actually done a video going more into depth and really explaining this, and I'll go ahead and link that below. But to give you a quick little definition, the debt snowball simply means that you focus on paying off the smallest debts first and the largest debts last. So you pay off your debts smallest to largest regardless of what the interest rates are. So in this case, you're gonna focus on the amount of the debt and you're not gonna worry about the interest rates. Next up is EF, and this is a term you probably see a lot, or abbreviation, I should say. An EF simply stands for emergency fund. And an emergency fund, which I think most people know, but it's simply a account you have set aside for emergencies. Now, this does not include planned emergencies, nor does it include vacations or any other sort of savings like this. This is an account that you keep separate for true emergencies and honestly an account you really hope that you don't need to touch or you have to touch it very, very infrequently. It's kind of one that you set aside and just have there as insurance. So also talking about emergency funds, I wanna talk about standard and bare bones emergency funds. You might see this a lot when people are talking about their emergency funds and talking about what kind of emergency fund they have. So with a standard emergency fund, you're gonna account for any of your usual needs that you would have on any given month. So let's say you have a three month standard emergency fund. That means that emergency fund is gonna have enough money to cover any typical bills or expenses you might have in any given three month period. However, when someone talks about their bare bone number or their bare bone emergency fund, they're talking about really stripping down their budget and only accounting for the absolute necessities or the four walls, which is food, transportation, home, and clothing. So with a bare bone emergency fund, you're truly, truly just talking about and planning for necessities that you would need and not nice to haves. We take out all the nice to haves on a bare bone emergency fund. The next term is lifestyle creep. And this is one of those terms that could mean a few different things, but has kind of the general idea. So my interpretation of lifestyle creep is when you increase your lifestyle, basically anytime you get a raise. Now I do say that this can be led to interpretation because it could also mean that you just increase your lifestyle as you get older, as you think you deserve things, as you think you hit certain milestones in your life. But basically at the end of the day, it does mean increasing your lifestyle bit by bit by bit. And it's usually meant in a negative way because often people are increasing their lifestyle at a faster rate than their income increases, or if it's at the same rate each time, you never really get ahead and you're never really able to achieve bigger savings goals or other financial goals because every time you get a raise, you up your lifestyle and you're always kind of like at a zero base. So 
this is one I could go much more in depth about. So if you do want to see a bigger video on lifestyle creep, just comment below and I'll explain it more. Next up are sinking funds. So sinking funds are just a specific and separate savings account to save for either specific events or items that you can anticipate. And so this is what makes it different from an emergency fund. This is something that you anticipate. These are often used for big purchases that you can't cash flow month to month. And so with a sinking fund, it simply means you put aside a little bit of money throughout the year in a separate and specific savings account to save up for that event. Next up is the cash system. And as it says in the name, cash symptom simply means that you are paying for things with cash when in person instead of using a credit or a debit card. Now, I also have a video on this, which I will link below because it is something I use, swear by, and I think it really helped me get out of debt. And finally, the last term I want to define is frugal. And this is used often in the debt-free community and in the personal finance world. And frugal simply means that you are most efficient with your money. It does not mean cheap. Frugal does not equal cheap. Cheap is when you buy something at its lowest price regardless of value. But when you're frugal and you're trying to be frugal, you concentrate on the value of something over the price of something so that in the end, you're the most efficient with your money. And this is a term that I think gets a bad rap all the time, so it's super important that I go ahead and define it for you. All right, that's it. That's what made the shortlist. Again, anything you want me to go more in depth to, or if you want me to define it and maybe I didn't talk about it today, comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, friends.